morning. It is Wednesday, December 30th, 2020, our final Wisdom Wednesday of the year. I just led a meditation where our inquiry was, what is getting in the way of trust? And this, this inquiry has become really, really important to me and in a way has been a thread for me throughout this whole year. The goal of all of these practices traditionally in the non-dualist traditions is liberation, moksha. That's the, that's the name in Sanskrit for it. The desire for liberation. Now, this is a phrase in Sanskrit. Um, and this desire for liberation is something that we're told that we have to cultivate. And again, you know, that can run counter to some some spiritual teachings, right, which might say that all of this is meant to overcome desire, right? We're supposed to suppress our desires and, and, and uh, ascend to be something better than our desires. Yes, this, this is perhaps at least the language around some spiritual goals, but not in the traditions that, that have been the most impactful and, and helpful for me. Last week, we talked a lot about how my, my teacher, Nasargadatta, talks about the importance of that desire and a conviction and a clarity around what we really, really crave and why. Last week, I gave you a definition of meditation and inquiry and said that really together, these help us achieve that sense of clarity around our goals. The desire for liberation for me has become stronger and stronger and stronger in this year where I've had a lot of challenges. It's as if, you know, the universe has been showing me what the cost of not being free really is. And it's been showing me not only in my own personal experiences with suffering, challenge, but in watching other people all around me suffer and, and be challenged. The kind of freedom and liberation that is talked about by the sages that I respect so much and by my teachers this is a liberation that cannot be contained. So, you know, they say that when the Buddha got liberated, he realized all creatures were actually liberated. The realization that we are all deserving of autonomy and liberty and um, selfhood, that is selfhood. And it comes up like a paradox, right? <clears throat> because we realize that the, the true self is the self that is always connected to others. And that therefore a real desire for liberation as we really get serious about that and get clear about what it means, there is no version of that that doesn't also liberate those around us. The enlightened being is the most trustworthy being there is because they don't see a separation between you and them. That's the nature of their freedom. I realize though that for me, I, I at times have, have let this desire for freedom, I've let myself get, get ahead of myself and and um, thought that maybe I could take some shortcuts and get to that freedom without giving it to others. But freedom, freedom comes really from letting go. 
This is another teaching that's come through in lots of different ways for me this year. Freedom comes from letting go of our attachments, of our identities, all these things that, that we've been talking about. And as, as Nisargadatta tells us, my teacher tells us, most of the, we just, <laughs> people don't want to give up. And that's what I was finding myself. I was running after freedom, not realizing that the, no matter how fast I ran, <laughs> um, no matter how hard I tried, I was holding on to my attachments as I ran, right? I was carrying them with me. Letting go, right? Letting go can only happen when we trust. And that's hence this inquiry of what's, what is preventing you from experiencing trust right now? What is preventing you from experiencing trust when you're worried about work or your child or whatever it is that you care about? The, the interesting thing, of course, is that when I do this inquiry, as I've done it this year, I've realized that the things that cause me the most anxiety, right, anxiety could be described as the experience of a lack of trust. And when I experience that, it's usually because I really care. I don't have anxiety about things that aren't as important to me. And the irony is that often when I want to be in that place of love the most, I'm actually, that love that I feel is generating fear, which is blocking the love. Okay, so I want freedom, but I have to let go. I want to let go, so I have to have trust. Last week, the quote was, you know, you're just not going to act if you don't have conviction. You're just... Something in you will prevent you, right? The same way if I, I don't know, decide to take a stage dive and a few of you are hanging out being like, yeah, go ahead. I, I got you, right? I've got to really believe that you've got me or my body just won't fall, right? And maybe we can actually force our bodies to do things that we really don't want to do, but ultimately, our hearts aren't, aren't going to follow along, right, for something where there isn't trust. And then I would say for me to have trust requires some sense of belonging. You can't even tell me, trust me, right? Go ahead, fall back if we don't have a language that we share, right? Language is belonging together as a, you know, that's our cultural connection, right? Um, and so this, this for me has been where I've been working really hard is to find that sense of belonging so that I can find that sense of trust so I can let go, so I can get that moksha, that freedom. And so, as you guys know, this, you know, I've been on this adventure looking for belonging. Here I am back in the bosom of my, my mother and my brothers and, and a lot of family. I've been trying to understand what belonging means in terms of this community. And as I think about my work going forward, how to create, um, circumstances where that experience is possible. And I named the course that we're about to all do in January, Belonging to Life, because ultimately that, that's the feeling when I'm meditating. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when I feel, when I, when I, when I can drop into that trust, when I can let go and I can touch and taste the bliss of freedom. It's when I realize that I, I am life, right? I belong, not just to other people, but to the whole universe. That, as my teacher says, we are, I am carrying with me the now and the here. 
there's no, there's no separation. That doesn't make me special that I get to carry the now and the here because you do too, right? And there it is again, this sense that love sees no borders. Love sees no division. Love sees no hierarchy. I real, I've real come to realize that that um, for me, I've spent a lot of my life paying attention to what everybody else needs, paying attention to those around me. Um, in a way, my highest need was to to be liked by others, to belong according to others, and what these practices have provided me is is that ability to turn inward and see that there's this whole being in here who is so deserving of my attention and care my identity i was attached to an identity of being the one who takes care of others and i was a little addicted to the validation that i got from doing so but it was keeping me from loving the one person in the equation that I always carried with me. It kept me from, from self-love. I'm gonna open it up to questions in a moment. I just wanna share a little quote with you. I'll share two. Nisarga Dutta says, turn within and you will come to trust yourself. In everything else, confidence comes with experience. So he's saying to us, just keep meditating. Keep turning that awareness that you're usually turning outward to study what everybody else is thinking and wanting and approving of and what they value. Turn that inward and come to trust yourself. Just keep doing it. And through that experience comes that confidence that we've been talking about the last couple of weeks as being essential for taking an action. And then here's the other quote I wanted to share. You are really in search of yourself without knowing it. You are love longing for the love worthy, the perfectly lovable. Due to your ignorance, you are looking for it in a world of opposites and contradictions. When you find it within, your search will be over. And so this is this is the process, right? Of learning how to belong to the self, learning how to belong to the whole universe through that inward turn coming to trust the truth of what we find there, here, and what we find here. Allowing that trust to, to grow enough that we can let go, right? let go of some of these attachments. That feeling of freedom comes when we're no longer constricted by the attachment and find here we are at one with everything, never disconnected from the source of life, never disconnected from what is most lovable and valuable. And this work for me is not over. It's not over nearly. In some ways I felt more confidence <laughs> or um, here's, here's how I'll say it. Going into 2020, I felt like I had a lot more answers, but going into 2021, I feel like I'm honing in on the right questions. I'm not at my destination, but I do feel like I'm, I've been turning in the right direction. I have been orienting myself. 
the right ways. And as I mentioned last week, I have a lot more, I'm a lot more at peace with the not knowing and the not being at the destination than I maybe have ever been. So that is, um, that's the heart of what I wanted to say today. If anybody has any questions or, or comments, or if you'd like me to speak more about any of that, please just pipe, pipe, pipe in. Um, in the chat box, you can just type in the chat box. Um, this evening is our founders closing circle on 2020. And at that point, yeah, I'm gonna ask folks to come on and, and uh, unmute themselves if they want to and share a little bit about what the journey of 2020 has been for you. Um, anyone who's not a founder can also participate in this. And we have a really, uh, we have a little section of Nora Village set up just for you to share about that. And we'll keep that open and going as we move into January in a couple days. All right, so um, we're gonna continue our schedule this week. Uh, we have some members who host these silent meditations throughout the week, and some of those are also gonna continue into January. So just go to the event section if you have um, wanna check out what is coming up over the next few weeks. I'm excited to meditate with you every day from January 4th to 24th and uh, see what happens as we turn inward even more and come to trust this life <laughs> that we belong to. All right, my friends, have a beautiful day. I'll see some of you tonight. I'll see the rest of you soon. And uh, I'm sending you lots of love. <laughs>